Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, The Coding Nurse. Um, my name is Jesse and I have been an LPN for a good while and I've been a medical coder now for a little over five years and I have five coding certifications. I really just wanted to do this video to talk to nurses and to encourage nurses to consider that there are other opportunities apart from the bedside or nursing administration to advance your career. Um, while I was finishing up uh, my LPM program, of course, our instructors you know, encouraged us to, you know, as soon as possible, go back to school and complete, you know, become an RN. So when I finished and passed my boards and started working, I took a few classes, but just deep down, it didn't feel like something that I really wanted to do. Um, so I stopped and I was, I'm fine being, even today, I'm fine being uh, an LPN. Um, so... As w while I was working, I just kind of got, you know, I just got burnt out. I got tired of the bedside. And like everybody else, I was like, what am I going to do to have this kind of flexibility? What am I going to do to make this kind of money? And the answer truly is medical coding. So um, I didn't get into medical coding right away. It took me years. So I left um, nursing and I went into IT. And that was during the height of the like dot com. Uh, era and there were plenty of IT jobs you could make pretty good money so I was doing that then when all the, the when it when the dot-com bubble burst and all of the help desk and um, support jobs got shipped overseas um, I went back into nursing didn't really you know was still just kind of unfulfilled but just you know paying the bills and living life then I went into cosmetology and barbering and I was pleasantly surprised that there are uh, uh, there is quite a lot of chemistry and a lot of science in um, the beauty industry, especially around sanitation. I mean, they talk about the same organisms that we learn in pathophysiology and how they talk about hand washing in, in nursing. And I was really surprised. I mean, I, and what really tripped me out was in cosmetology, they talk about the fifth cranial nerve a lot, which is the trigeminal nerve, which controls your face because when you're doing facials and manipulations, like you have to, you know, that is... Uh, you know, it can be a, a trigger point. So that was interesting. So while I was in the beauty industry, I got kind of bored because I still like the technical aspect of healthcare. And I was like, I have all this, you know, knowledge that's really just going to waste. So um, I was talking to one of my friends and she was talking about HEDIS. I'll do another video about HEDIS to explain what exactly that is. And she was saying that it's really hard to find, you know, training. So I just, every time I saw a HEDIS job, I would apply whether I was qualified or not. I just applied. And for a couple of years, I never heard anything. But I would just apply blindly, just keep it moving. So finally, one year, a job called me. It's the only job that ever called me for a coding job. And they, this particular, particular company only hired nurses that they trained for risk adjustment coding. So I started training and they didn't require a certification. You just had to be a nurse. So they hired RNs and LPNs and I went through training, started working for them. And I found that I really, really liked it. Like you would think that, you know, when you first think about it, especially as you're, if you're a nurse, like you're on the floor moving around and interacting with patients and you think, oh my God, I would be bored to death sitting at a desk all day. I'm really not. And now granted, everything is not for everybody, but I really enjoyed it and I still enjoy it because you get to put all of that knowledge to use and you also get to think completely differently than you would when you, if you were taking care of that same patient because you're looking at it from a, like a revenue type of situation. Because when you're taking care of your patient and your patient has, you know, CHF, you're not thinking about, well, how much is the hospital gonna get paid for that? Or, or did the doctor document this condition appropriately? You just, you'd read in the progress notes and, you know, reading your nurse's notes and you're seeing that the person is stable and that they're improving. That's really all, that's as far as you take it. But on the flip side, on when you are in health, when you're in coding, which is really all a part of revenue cycle management, you get to look at it, you get to look at that entire encounter and that entire inpatient stay or, or a clinic visit from a whole different standpoint. Because on the back end, all of that terminology gets reduced to a code or a couple of codes because that's how you get paid by CMS and that's how you get paid by your private insurance company. That's how your provider gets paid. 
So it, it takes on a whole different life and it becomes, you look at it from a completely different perspective, which is really, really interesting and a lot of fun. And I think that a lot of nurses don't know because nobody really talks to nurses about coding. And like I said, a lot of nurses think that it's boring and it's really, really not. And a lot of nurses don't know how easy it is to trans to transition into coding from nursing. It is, when I tell you it's simple, it's really, 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 really easy. You just have to have someone explain it to you properly. You're already 80% there as a nurse because you already know pathophysiology, you already know medical terminology, you already know A and P, you already know pharmacology. So all you need to learn is the are the coding guidelines and how to use the coding book. That's it. And after that, you can you can you know work anywhere doing anything. And just as broad as the nursing profession is, the coding profession is just as if not more broad. So uh there's a there's a ton of opportunity on the other side of the bedside if you want to uh, consider it. And what a lot of nurses, you know, feel uh, or is a concern when they when they leave nursing, the concern is flexibility and the concern is money. Um, I'll talk about flexibility first. Coding, because I've worked all all the jobs I've had. I've only had one job where I had to work outside the house and I only had that job for like a month. Uh, it just didn't work out, but it wasn't because I had to go out, I go out the house, it was just because it didn't work out, I didn't like it. But you have flexibility to work whenever you want and wherever you want. Like when you have a remote job, you can live anywhere in the country. As long as you have electricity and an internet access, you can work. It's just that simple. And I would, and that kind of flexibility for location is very interesting, especially with this era of you know um, climate you know change and people are concerned about the environment and these um, uh, tornadoes and these uh, hur hur hurricanes are becoming more uh, more violent and, and more uh, more damaging. I think that someone who lives in the, in those areas that could possibly you know possibly be affected, you would be. Uh, relieved to know that if you have to evacuate and move to higher ground or move to another move to another location, all you have to do is take your laptop and your coding books, and you can continue to work from wherever you are. And you won't at least you will have a job, so that would be some kind of stability and some kind of sense of normalcy, as opposed to having to use your benefits or wait to apply for unemployment or wait until you know you get money from FEMA or however it works you will be able to still be in control of at least that aspect of your life your occupation and your job would not change and your money would not change so that I think would be a major major plus for, for people who are affected by natural disasters and um, you have flexibility in terms of time you can work um, seven days a week you know, there are some jobs that give you complete flexibility. You can work as long as you work 40 hours, you can work them out however you want. If you want to work, you know, four days a week, if you want to work, um, you know, 11 to 7 in the morning, if you want to work 11 to 7 at night, you certainly can. You just have to find out what your uh, what your employer can, you know, considers a week. Is it from Saturday to, you know, to Friday, Saturday to Sunday, Sunday to Monday? So. Uh, I mean, Monday to Sunday, so you would just have to work it out during that time. But that is great to have that kind of flexibility, especially if you are a single parent or if you have aging parents. You don't have to necessarily use your, your PTO to take your uh, to take someone to a, an appointment or to the doctor. You can just, if you want to take off that whole day, if they're having a procedure, you could take that whole day off and then make it up on Saturday. And you don't have to you know, lose any, use any time unnecessarily. So that's a definite, definite bonus. And also, um, a lot of nurses um, are concerned about money. Uh, of course, when you, if you've been a nurse for a, a number of years, the money you make now is not the money you made with your first nursing job. Coding is the same way. Once you get at least a year under your belt, you can start to negotiate from there. Because that first year, you want to get in anywhere you can. Um, I don't recommend contract work just like when you're a nurse. They don't recommend that you just you first start off working for an agency. 
uh, contract work is the same way. You don't want to start off with them. You want to start off with an employer, someone that is going to give you training, someone that is going to give you um, some kind of feedback, somebody that's going to basically nurture you and mentor you to bring you up to speed. Once you're up to speed and once you're comfortable and you have your coding confidence, then you can, if you want to get a second job or if you want to go out there and say, well, I'm good now, let me go make as much money as I can and I want to do contract work, you can. There are salary positions. There are, there are coding positions you can have as a nurse. There are nurses who are at home and coders who are at home making between eighty to $100,000 a year. It can be done. It is being done. So you don't have to let that be a, de uh, a deterrent. You can make very, 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 very good money as a coder, especially with a nursing background. Because it's one thing to, to learn medical terminology. It's another thing to learn um, pathophysiology and to learn A and P. But when you actually see these complications, you see these disease processes in action and you see all of the other side effects that come along and you see it when you can touch it, you know, smell it, you know, it, it brings a different level of uh, knowledge and a different level of expertise that uh, a coder who can, you know, code a chart just as well as, as a nurse can, you, you as a nurse are going to have a different even a different perspective on how you even view that same note. Even though you'll come up with the same codes, you'll see it in a different way, which is really great. And that's what a lot of employers like. If you are a nurse and a certified coder, you will always, typically, I'll, I'm not gonna say always, but you will typically make more money than someone who is just a coder, especially if you know how to negotiate. Uh, almost every job that I've had, I've had to negotiate my salary and I always negotiate higher and I always use that the fact that I'm a nurse and it always works in my favor. So um, that is a definite plus. And um, the next thing I want to talk about is the cost of certifications. Uh, once again, I'm going to do another um, more detailed video explaining this, but there are two main um, coding code certifying organizations. AHIMA and AAPC. Currently, I have two AHIMA certifications and I have three AAPC certifications. Um, so you have to decide what it is you, what kind of certification you want because you have to decide what area you want to go into. Uh, ultimately, I think that every nurse, if you're going to get into coding, you ultimately need to think about and decide if you want to go into the, the I'll tell you the two main areas of coding especially now and in the future. It's going to be auditing and it's going to be clinical documentation. So if you are a nurse and you want to get into coding, uh, once, you get, once you get your first job and once you get some, some additional um, experience, you know, just think about whether you want to go into auditing, which is huge, 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 and clinical documentation, which is also just huge. Because auditing is how your, uh, your organization uh, maintains compliance because we all hear uh, on television and in newspaper articles all of the billions of dollars that CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, um, which is the largest health care provider in the country because they, uh, they oversee Medicare and Medicaid. Um, when you see all of the billions of dollars that they recoup annually in, over, in uh, overcharges, that providers and facilities make to them. When you are a coder and you start looking at these charts, you will understand exactly why it happens and how prevalent it is. And that's where you as a nurse, your, I don't wanna say your moral responsibility, but your, your obligation, it kind of drives home because when you're a nurse, the first thing, they, you, the first thing you wanna do is protect your license at all costs. You're not gonna do anything to jeopardize your license. Coding is the same way. You can lose your coding certification. You can be charged with fraud as a coder. So you're not going to do anything to, to jeopardize your livelihood or your way, of li your, your way of supporting yourself and your family. So you need people who are used to 
talking with physicians and providers because there's a comfort level that nurses have with doctors and providers because we interact with them all day. I mean, they're not like this boogeyman that a lot of people who have not had that kind of direct contact seem to think. And there's a way, you know, nurses know how to talk to providers that is not, you know, condescending, that's not, you know, um, punitive, like what well, you did, you didn't do this right. Like it's, it's a collaboration. We're there to help. Like we're not doctors. That's why we're nurses and doctors do what they do. Like doctors drive healthcare, period, because without a diagnosis, there is no money to be had, period. So I think that that's another advantage that nurses have over regular coders because you already have a comfort level with communicating with um, with providers. And also, I want to talk about the impact that, that nurse coders can have, or that coders have, period, in healthcare. As a nurse, like you talk to your charge nurse, you talk to your nurse and supervisor, and you may, on occasion, talk to, you know, the VP of nursing when he or she comes around, you know, to pay a visit to the to the station, to the nurse's station in their crisp jacket with their, you know, nice monogram and their clothes that are spotless because they're not going to bust a sweat to help you do anything. Um, you that's the the most that's the highest interaction you'll have with executive management as a coder. I have had meetings you know, most of the time with um, chief medical officers, regional medical officers, compliance directors, because that's how important coding is to the, to the, 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 the profitability of a company and of a healthcare system. If your coding is off and if you're constantly getting, um, getting hit with reimbursement, if you're constantly being sent a bill to, uh, to CMS, like they're going to eventually start to investigate. They're going to audit you. And sometimes you can be put on, you know, uh, prepayment status, which is, you know, not what you want to do because that, excuse me, because that definitely ties up your revenue. So um, it's just, you, you have a much greater impact as a, as a nurse and a coder than you will as a, as a nurse. Now, of course, on the flip side, you know, as a bedside nurse, you definitely save lives and you definitely keep some, you know, keep people alive that way. So that's a whole different type of impact. I'm talking about impact on the entire revenue cycle. And what you have to say as a nurse, when you speak about revenue cycle management seems to have a little bit more weight than when you ever say to your supervisor or to nursing administration, we need more staff. So, you know, because they always give you a listening ear, but it never comes. So anyway, um, I basically just wanted to touch on that and I wanted to also talk about um, the cost of certification. You don't have to spend a lot of money to be certified. Like I said, I have five certifications and for each of my certifications, I have not spent more than $200 on study resources for any of those certifications. The cost of the certification exam has always been more than what I paid to study for that exam. And that's the way you want it. You want that to be the most expensive thing. There are people who are right on YouTube who sell classes. And I'm, I haven't taken them, so I can't say. But what I can say is you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to spend thousands of dollars, especially as a nurse, to learn coding. It is not that you're not that far off from what you need. So, of course, my channel is to introduce this topic. And what I'm also going to do, I'm also working on... Um, a program that I have that I'm in the process of developing myself to work only with nurses to help you become a certified coder in two months. It can be done. Trust me. Um, so that's the whole purpose of the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. And if you are a nurse who is transitioned into coding, leave a comment to let people know, you know, how you did it and let people know that it can be done and let people know your, your overall experience. I myself have thoroughly enjoyed it and um, I have worked with nurses who are coders who are well into their 70s. They're working from home still and at 70 plus years old, still you know, meeting their productivity, still meeting their accuracy and still making good money and being able to, to maintain their independence. You don't have to, this is not something that you have to you know, retire at 65 and then go on and sit in a rocking chair. You can do it as long as you're mentally able and physically able to do it. 
So that's pretty much the end of this video. I want to thank you if you got this far. And if you have any questions, like I said, leave it in the comments. And if you know any nurses who are frustrated with their jobs and want to make a, a career change but don't really know how and are not really sure, invite them to watch this video, share the video with them, and I'll see you in a few days when I post another video. Bye.